ago, I was a woodworker doing all things like this. Uh, and I was doing custom furniture for people and I was building a door and I hurt my hand on a router. And I had six weeks with pins in my finger. I couldn't work, I couldn't do anything. And I had a friend who had, um, he had a home brewing kit. And I said, you ever use that thing? And his wife gave it to me for Christmas like a year earlier. And I said, you ever use that thing? And he said, no. I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. Let's go get stuff from homebrew. And so we went and bought three batches worth of beer, an IPA, a Belgian Golden, which is in fermentation. I haven't changed that recipe. Um, and the blueberry wheat. And so we did those three every Tuesday for the first three weeks in February of 08. And then I think it was the fourth batch of beer we did uh, was we modded out this porter recipe. And, um, you know, next week did a couple more. Uh, two or three weeks later, the, uh, the porter was ready. And gave it around to all my friends. I had like 50 bottles of it. You know, I had bottled up everything I had. And everyone was like, you could sell this. And I was like, I could sell this. You know, like, and, you know, from there it started out. I just, that encouraged me to keep, I thought it was pretty good, but that encouraged me to keep doing more and more and more. And so I was always, I've always hammered at least over once a week. There were times where I didn't brew for six weeks because I was busy on things, but then I would go and brew like when I met Jill. I met Jill in late 08? 09. 09? Oh, 09. Yeah, it was 09. I just got married. Yeah, so um, I met Jill in late 09 because we had done a tasting and a guy was there and he... He was a good customer of mine. I used to own a wine and craft. It was Mike store. Springer, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Mike, this guy, Mike Springer, came in and he, he went back to Jill she was running this wine shop, and he's like, you gotta check out this guy's beer, like, it's really good. And he, and then, I don't know how I ended up, you contacted me or something? I contacted you guys, and then Justin... Came over here and gave you a six pack when you were going to New York, Yes, right? we were on our way, my husband and I were on our way to New York, and we brought a six pack home and tasted it with everybody in New York, and like, flipped out. And over I was, everything but the hemp, which is so funny, because the hemp's my favorite now. Yeah, that's fun. Well, yeah. it wasn't as good. I know. Um, I had been brewing for, so I started brewing in February of 08, we moved back to Michigan in June of 08, and, I'm, and I talked to my friend Justin, who I'd grown up with around here, and I said, uh, I really think we should turn this into a business, and he's, he's a banker, and I thought, he, and I said, I don't want to do it without you, you're a good financial mind and whatever, and I'm, I want to focus on brewing and whatever. And so that's when we started writing a business plan. That was around, that was very early 09, and we were trying to figure out who to pitch it to and show, and it was a pretty, it was a pretty form, early formulative business plan, and somebody said, well, you need to go and talk to the chef at the garden center, and we went and talked to him, and he's, he, he showed up, and we had a beer with him one day, and he said, well, I have this whole tasting idea worked out, and so, you know, we'll invite all the chefs from the area restaurants, and he knows everybody, and so all these chefs show up, and we're like, well, this is cool, this is the first time putting our beer in front of people, and everybody loved it, and, and all those people now, our beer's on tap at all their places, and this is now two years later. Um, so for two years they had to wait and see if we're actually we're ever going to open and watch all the machinations going on. And so as we're going along, we started looking for space and continued looking for money, and, and we ended up finding the space and the equipment through a kind of convoluted thing before we found our operating capital. Um, but because our name was out in front of everybody, Getting our operating capital together became a lot easier. So, in a way, in a sense, we put the cart before the horse because Jill invited me. So by then we're at like fall of '09, and Jill invited me to do the Extreme Beer Fest in Three Oaks. So we showed up, and Imperial was there, and all these guys are trying my beer, and Jill's pitching me as like this brewery that's going to open around here, and everybody's all excited to try my stuff. And I was really meticulous as in, like, I was a meticulous note taker. I was really cautious about my process. I was really, I was, I'm really neurotic about how I do things. And I came from a background where my grandmother and my mom taught me how to cook when I was a little kid. I was making my own sausage, I was making my own cheese, I was making bread. I was doing things that worked with yeast and failing at bread for a long time and figuring out how to manipulate yeast properly. So I think, I've never quantified it, but I think that's kind of how it made sense that that's how brewing made sense to me. Um, and so we do this Extreme Beer Fest, and it was crazy because there were only like 110 people there, right? Mm -hmm. But our table was just... It was annoying because it was the only beer. I mean, it was awesome now, but it was the only beer I didn't have for sale, and it was the only beer besides KBS that people wanted to buy. And we were just like...
like our table's mobbed. And I remember reps, all the Imperial people there, that's what got him, that's when Imperial was like, what's up with these guys? And and because of that, other distributors start getting curious about us. And so sooner or later, we have like three distributors following us around, seeing what we're up to and asking for beer. And we're nowhere near ready to open. We didn't even start, we didn't even gotten this building secured yet. And But we kept presenting ourselves as being almost there. And because I kept handing out beer, I've, I've handed out, up to opening here, I handed out over 9,000 bottles of beer. And what it did was it kept everybody just waiting. And nobody walked away because they were still waiting because I kept coming out with a new beer and a new thing. It's really interesting to now be here, just to, to sidebar off of it. It's interesting to see in any other industry, if you kept saying, I'll be open next month, I'll be open next year, I'll be open you know, in, in the next few months. And we've been saying, I mean, I only really came on full time recently, but it's been soon for two years. And every single person is still interested was here on opening weekend or has at least contacted us is still coming into by growlers is it's been this it, and it's because the beer is that good like it's why i have faith in the beer because people just really believe it yeah and, and it's funny because if i had a nickel for every time somebody said you know you got this wave of momentum going and it's going to go down and I'm, and, I, and i would start freaking out and i'd want to hurry and i'd be pushing the process along and i never could push everything as fast as i wanted to but in the meantime what i would do is the only thing I could do was to keep brewing more, so I did. And he would be brewing like nine days a week to get ready for one of my Yeah, events. like nine times in a, in a given week I would go, well so I'm still self-employed as a woodworker, so I like to strip my schedule back as little as I could to make just enough money to get by with my wife's approval. I was like, you know, we're gonna make as little as we can here and I'm just gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing at this, and I did. And and so I was able for the next Extreme Beer Fest, I showed up and uh, now I'm better. Now I've got everything kegged and we're tapping and like we're doing beer dinners and all these things. Because I'd be brewing like nine times a week, which if you're a home brewer, you know, is like five gallons at a time, six hours at a crack and they're sterilizing bottles. I was so happy to move to corny kegs because I was like not sterilizing all these bottles anymore. This is ridiculous, you know. But all these, when you add up the hours, you're still putting in like 60, 70 hours a week doing stuff like that, which is why opening a business like this, just getting up and going and getting staffing, figuring out all that. So we're putting in like huge hours. Jill and I are putting in, we're putting in almost 90 hours last week, but because you know what the benefit, the long-term benefit of it is.